Hey, hi friends. Good evening. Uh, once again, welcome to the special training, special sessions, geospatial uh, and analytics. And um, as part of the series of the sessions that, that we were connecting over, we were discussing about how GIS system is getting advanced with respect to the usage of analytics. And we also discussed about different types of data. We discussed about different types of libraries. Um, in the last session, we also have uh, discussed about one of the data analytics approach, which is also called as machine learning unsupervised learning approach, which is uh, basically called as clustering technique. And we are going to try and see how the knowledge that we have uh, gained over a uh, few days we implement it on a specific geospatial data. We'll talk about one simple use case, which is publicly available. You can also get the data. You can also um, probably run through the code. Um, but yeah, let me go through. I'll, I'll explain important points in that particular code so that you, you can correlate and you can understand what exactly is happening in that particular code. Now, just to have a quick revision on what exactly clustering is. Clustering is a topic where we are trying to group the data. Now, when we are trying to group the data, we need to remember that we are grouping with respect to all the fields that we have. All the variables have to be considered. It's not like you have a data set and you take one column and then arrange the data according to that. For example, if I have one column as gender, then you cannot say male and female and all the male details are, are grouped separately or female group uh, details are separately, right? So we, we should not be doing that. that that's not the uh, requirement basically here. Clustering speaks about taking all the characteristics, right? Considering all, how we can try and group them. The objective is to ensure that similar records belong to one cluster. Right? That means here we are creating homogeneity, consistency. Dissimilar records these dissimilar records should be belonging to a different cluster altogether. Right? It cannot be there in the same cluster. It has to be completely on different cluster. This is what we, we basically have tried uh, to uh, bring up. The logic is if you have similarity or homogeneity or certainty, then extracting information from that particular data becomes very easy. Now, if I talk about data where you probably have too much of variation, too much of uncertainty, commenting about that particular data or extracting information from that particular data becomes a little tricky scenario, right? You will not be able to um, confidently say the, the details or, or right, confidently talk about the details that we can extract from the data, uh, from that particular data set. And then we talked about doing this clustering. We talked about multi variate data. That means we'll have multiple variables, not one or two variables, but we may have many variables. Now, in such case, if I have to try and identify similarities, then the logic that we are going to use is the distance measure. So we are quantifying the distances and using those distance calculations, we are going to try and identify how similar the data records are or how dissimilar the data records are. Right, so that is uh, basically our uh, objective with respect to the clustering. And uh, we discussed on the distance measure. Here we talked about Pythagorean theorem, or we can also say this is nothing but Euclidean distance. 
that we are going to use the Euclidean uh, distance. We also have uh, talked about the other type of distances. This is specifically because with respect to geospatial data, we will have um, to also look at the distances with respect to two different physical locations on Earth. Right? Your Earth model can be categorized into three different types, flat, spherical, and ellipsoid. Flat, spherical, and ellipsoid. Okay, so that is also just here. And based on these different methods, we, we generally go with different mathematical calculations. The most popularly used technique is Euclidean distance, or you can also say that as your Pythagorean theorem. But we also have Haversine formula or Vincenti's formula. Vincenti's formula is, is considered to be more precise. Right, so oh, sorry, that's uh, basically about your distance calculations. Now these distance calculations are used when we are trying to measure the um, uh, different uh, distances with respect to the locations. Now we discussed in detail with respect to Pythagorean theorem, or you can say Euclidean distance method only. Right, that's about your clustering topic. And in the clustering also, we talked about two different types of clustering approaches. One is hierarchical approach, hierarchical clustering. The other one is the non-hierarchical clustering. Right, hierarchical and non-hierarchical clustering. Now we discussed about this. The idea is to try and measure the distances between all the paves of records that we can try and create from our data. And then we keep merging the closest pave. This becomes a cluster. So we will start with N clusters and we reach till single cluster. Right, we, we go till we reach a single cluster. And this approach is called as agglomerative. Right, it's called as agglomerative clustering. So that's about your clustering algorithm. Now, as part of the use case, we will be using Python programming. And we are going to use the Jupyter Notebook, that Jupyter Notebook form of execution, the executing the Python programs. This is the IDE. And this Jupyter Notebooks that we are going to use are from Google Collab. So we are using Google Collaborative. This is a platform, a cloud-based platform, which provides you with Python kernel, Python execution environment. And it also gives the Jupyter Notebook interface, which will be used for writing your Python programs. So we are going to use G Jupyter Notebooks and the use case that we are going to talk about is to analyze the Starbucks, all right, the Starbucks uh, stores. We will try and follow this flow on the geospatial data where we are assuming that the data is already collected. And from there on, we will start uh, doing things. So after data collection happens, we do data cleansing or data treatment, pre-processing. In our data set, we will observe that there will be some missing values and we will be trying to handle those missing values. And then we will also take 
the additional data from different data sets, we'll also see how we can merge, right? Or do the data merging basically, data ingestion and data merging. How we can consolidate the fields which are coming from different uh, data sets. And then we will also try and see grouping or clustering. Right? And then we will try and apply certain conditions based on which we will try and identify the different stores on a geographical map. Ultimately, it's a geospatial analytics, right? So we will try and locate the stores, branches, the different stores that we have, uh, the top performing stores. Now, as I said, this is a publicly available code. You can also try and experiment on this. This gives you a very good uh, in-depth knowledge on working on a geospatial analysis of your data. You can reach back to us on YouTube channel. You can put a query and we shall share the details about this particular code that you are seeing on the screen. The interface that you're seeing is basically called as Google Colab. Now, how do I get a Google Colab? Right? I, I, I don't have any idea about Python programming and all that. So you can simply search for Google Colab. Open Google and search for Google Colab. This is nothing but collaboratory platform. The URL that you are going to get is research.google.com slash collaborate. If I click on that, it will redirect us to the Google Collaboratory page. This is how the, the screen looks like to start with. Okay. Some example codes and a lot of documentation is available. You can probably go through all these things. All you need to have is a Gmail account. If you have a Gmail account, then you will be able to log in and you'll be able to get this particular access. All you have to do is create a new notebook. You can also edit in the same space also, but it is advised to create a new notebook. It will give you an empty page, right? Empty, uh, empty interface like this. you will see connect. So the interface UI is given, but in the back end, you don't have a Python engine, which is connected to your environment. Okay. So we'll not be using this. I will be opening the file, which is right already um, available. Right, this, this particular code. So once I have that new code, uh, I started updating here. When you say code plus code, this is where you can type your code. It will give you a field which will be allowing you to write the code. The text content can be used here plus text. This will be allowing you to write the comments, the text data. For example, I'm putting a title here. So I'm using a test, uh, text cell and then writing the text content. We need to start using the libraries. I'll also right, talk about uh, the data and all that. But to start with, there are certain libraries that are required for us to get the right uh, code going. And here we are going to use GeoPandas library. Now it is a public source, open source uh, project, right? And uh, this basically allows us to work with geospatial data and thanks to the Python pandas library. You might have heard pandas library from Python. If you have not heard, then this is a data manipulation library. Now you may ask what is library? 
library can be seen as a folder which contains python content python codes i, I would say codes and documentation okay so all related codes for a, from a like specific industry or a specific task all of those similar kind of libraries are bundled together and we get a folder right so that is your pandas folder and this pandas library will allow us to deal with data in a proper table format so we have a data frame and we have a series these are the two data types that your pandas library can work with data frame is nothing but a table okay and a series is nothing but a single column right it will have a single column Right, so that is uh, your pandas. Now, when you talk about GIS data, we understood that anything to do with locations can be qualified as geospatial data or GIS data. And we have this library called GeoPandas, which will allow us to work with the uh, geospatial data right on on along with your pandas uh, capabilities what were the geometric operations that we talk about right the the primary objective of geopandas library is to ensure that we work with gis data okay now it it works with pandas library this is clear it also has the capability of a library called Shapely. Right? And combination of these two will allow geospatial operations to, to actually be taken care of uh, these operations on your geometries or, or shapes, basically. Now, what is this Shapely? Shapely is again a Python library. And it is specifically used for dealing with your uh, uh, planar geometric objects. Okay, it doesn't uh, specifically deal with any data formats or coordinated uh, systems, but it can be very simply used to deal with, um, I should say, Your geometric data, I mean, that, that's how it is explained. Okay, now Shapely is a library which um, right, only tries to, um, I should say, work with the, um, the kind of geometric data, right, which comes from uh, Python GIS or GeoJSON, right, these kind of different formats of data okay um yeah i mean geo, geo, this geospatial data or, or geo pandas is, is basically um thanks to its capabilities to work with the python and the geometric shapes or, or geometric um uh, data all right Uh, probably you might want to read more about the uh, Shapely. It, it um, allows you to talk about all the, again, the world models that we have discussed, right? Flat model, uh, the spherical model, and uh, the ellipsoid model. Isn't it? So similarly, when, when we talk about, say, uh, your spatial data model, the geometric objects that, that we talk about uh, in Shapely, we can uh, deal with these data points uh, in three different forms. We basically talk about a point, we talk about, talk about a curve, or we can talk about a surface. Okay. 
Okay. And each of these three um, objects that we are talking about, the three different objects, right, geometric objects, will have uh, three set of values. One is interior, the other one is exterior, and what is the boundary? Right? The point when we speak about it has an interior set of exactly one point. I mean, point is just a dot, right? So it, it basically is interior. And when you talk about boundaries, th there's nothing like boundary with respect to a data point. No, no points. Exterior becomes another set of points. Interior is the point itself. Exterior becomes other points. Then we talk about curve. So we talk about interior, right? Exterior and exterior and we talk about boundary. A data point is nothing but an interior, um, right? Exactly one point that is your interior. There is no boundary for it, right? There are no data points. And then we talk about exterior means the other point. This is something that we just explain. When we talk about curve, curve object, it has an interior. And these interiors are nothing but different data points. I mean, see, data point is like this, curve is like this. So when we talk about this curve, there will be many data points which are right along its length. Boundary will become the end points. This becomes your boundary. Right? And exterior becomes all the other points. Again, exterior is always all the other points. Then when we talk about surface, it contains, I mean, it's, it's like a plane, X and Y plane, right? So this is a surface. When we talk about interior, there are infinitely many possible data points that can be found on the surface, right? I mean, it's a space, right? Uh, a surface is nothing but a space. You can talk about an area. So it almost has an infinite set of data points there. Boundary will always uh, basically come as one or more curves per surface. Boundary becomes curves. And exterior again becomes all the other data. Okay, so these are the three different uh, objects that we'll have in geospatial data that uh, Shapely deals with. And the GeoPandas works with the Shapely library and Pandas library. Ultimately, these two allow us to deal with geospatial data. GIS. Now we need to install this. These libraries, understanding these libraries is very important. So ensure that you go through the documentation, official documentation of this particular GeoPandas library also. You can basically get the details in pyti.org. There's nothing but Python programming index. This is the centralized location where all your libraries are uh, placed and you can see all these are the dependent libraries which are needs to be installed because this is a google collab it's a simple basic um, interface jupyter interface that is uh, uh, given and in the back end the engine always needs to be updated with the libraries so every time you are going to come up with a new um, Google Collab um, right, um, server that, that is getting assigned to you. We have already discussed about Google Collab. I'm assuming that you people understand 
the Google Colab features by now. Once the server is assigned, you need to ensure that the packages are installed every time. Whenever you talk about new session, you need to do that. The basic libraries for machine learning are by default installed, right? And when you have installed here, GeoPandas, then there are a bunch of other libraries that it is automatically installing. Right? It is basically bringing in all those different libraries that are required, including Pandas, you can see, PyProject, Shapely, Fiona. So all those things are automatically getting installed. And we're going to use these libraries for our code development purpose. Now, one of the interesting libraries that, that you need to see here is Folium. Now, what is this Folium or Folium? It will allow, uh, basically the library Folium is going to allow us to come up with different types of maps, right? It is, it is basically allowing us to construct or create maps, right? That's basically what your uh, uh, Folium library is, is basically used for. Leaflet maps, we call it. Okay, and uh, when we talk about the installation, you already see that this installation, this library is already installed as a dependency when you have, um, okay, it is not there. So probably it is by default available. Uh, if it is not available, then we'll have to use pip install folio library command. Now, Mat, pandas, numpy, geopandas. Within the geopandas, we are also specifically talking about geocode. And then folium. Within the folium, we have uh, marker and mark, uh, marker cluster uh, libraries. If I hover my mouse here, you can see the definition. Is. Provides beautiful animated marker clustering functionalities for maps. If I talk about marker, create a simple stock leaflet marker on the map with optional text pop-ups. Right, so and so forth. We are now using Shapely library. Under that, we have geometry. Under that, I'm trying to import point. Just now we discussed, right? Shapely will deal with point, curve, and surface. A zero-dimensional feature, a point has zero length and zero area. A data point. Right, on a map, it, it looks like a dot. And we have uh, the Pi Project my library, and then we are using CSR library. Coordinate Reference CRSM. Co a Pythonic Coordinate Reference System Manager. And it, it basically is dealing with um, the raster data here. Raster IO library is being used. Uh, rather than vector data, we are going to deal with raster IO. So these are a bunch of libraries that I'm going to import and the library has been successfully imported. Now I'm going to embed a map here. Right? I'm, I'm trying to bring a map. And for that, I'm writing a custom function here. In Python, custom function is written using a specific syntax. The syntax goes by this, def is the keyword which is used to define a function and this is the function name. We have a function, right? So we are saying, hey, this is the name that I'm going to give for my function. And then it has arguments. Right? These arguments are nothing but the data points or, or the options that parameters that we are passing to the input, I mean to the code. You can also call them as variables. We put colon symbol and after the colon symbol, by leaving out some space, which is called as indentation, by default it's the tab 
separator. From here, we will write the body of our code, whatever the function that we are going to try and apply. If I write my line here, that means this is the code block, the function block, and this becomes a separate line altogether. Right? This is basically called as indentation style of writing this code is called as indentation. The space that you're seeing is allowing us to understand the code blocks. Okay. So this is your custom code development. Here I'm passing two arguments. I'm saying M and then the file name. And using the iframe, a frame basically iframe is nothing but the canvas or you can say a frame of a screen where the visualizations can be done. I'm saying m dot save with respect to the file name. You're basically giving the name. Right? You're basically passing the um, empty visualization screen here. So we, we are basically saying that hey, you, you take this empty space and embed it. So M is basically where you want to print or how you want to print the visualization or the map. And file name is the, the, the file that you are trying to uh, come up with. Right? File name is nothing but the location you can see. Right? And, and we are trying to come up with that in a space here. This is basically an iframe window that you are going to get. I'll execute this. <coughs> this is a custom function. I'm calling it as mb underscore map. Now I'm going to load the data set. Now in Google Colab, you will get a folder. This folder is for your temporary data storage purpose. We will have to use this file symbol to upload the files that are required for our code execution. These are a bunch of the files that are required. The original data set is Starbucks underscore locations dot CSV. And uh, once you upload the data from here, you can just click on it and it'll give you the pop up. You're basically selecting the files that are required to be uploaded and boom, your data is available. But what is the location, right? So in order to get the location, you click on the three dots that you're seeing when you hover the mouse. On that, you can say copy path. And when you paste here, that is what you're going to get. Content slash Starbucks underscore location. Right? So this is the total path. We are importing the data. And then I'm also saying head. Head will give us first five records of the data. Right? It returns first five records. So we have store number right? for your geospatial data. We have store number. Then we have store name. Each branch has name. Their address is given. City is given. And for the city, I mean, for the location, we are giving longitude and latitude to exactly pinpoint that particular store within that city. The exact location is given by latitude and longitude. Now we are trying to do some cleaning act here, pre-processing act here. So we are trying to check if we have null values to start with. Now you can simply say data set here. I'm giving this data set name as Starbucks, right? So this is Starbucks stuff info. It gives us the entire summary of the data. You can see here, it contains 2,821 entries. The index starts from zero to so much, uh, to eight to zero. The number of columns is six, and these are the indexes for columns starting from zero to five. Now you can see these numbers are 2,821 entries, but these two are not 2,821. So seems to be like there are five records which are missing. In these two columns, there are five null values. 
Now, in order to check exactly the null values, we can use is null dot sum function. And this is going to give us the number of null values for each column, of course. Right? And you can see that it is like five records in longitude and five records in latitude. And we are trying to specifically print the data where NA is present on this latitude and longitude. You're saying or even if one of these columns have missing data, it will it will basically be printed. But this is what you get: the five records. NAN basically means no data. These are the store numbers, store name, addresses, and city. One thing you can see here is the city is remaining constant for all the records where the missing data is occurring. That means in our data set, we can clearly see that the Starbucks branches in the city of Berkeley are not giving latitude and longitude. Their, their location, exact locations are not given. Right? Except for Berkeley, all the other data uh, cities are having the exact locations. Now, we want to do some kind of a cleaning act, right? So, we will be trying to do missing value treatment here. And to do that, I'm using open street map. Okay, open street map. Open street map is, is publicly available map, uh, right? The uh, library, OSM. It's a standard. Okay, the uh, global standard that, that is preferred or, or used, OSM, open street map. Like you have Google Maps. So here I'm writing a custom function. Here. Okay, that's a custom function. You are passing the row, row ID. And then it is trying to take the row ID using the geocodes. It is uh, capturing the latitude and longitude from the um, open source, uh, this, this open street map location. So we're capturing point X and point Y from this uh, nominated uh, library, or, or you can say that is a provider for your uh, open street map. Geocode is giving us the latitude and longitude. So we are taking those rows, which are basically having missing data here, these five rows, and then applying the function, my geocoder function on address. When you give this address, it locates this address exactly on the map. And using that location, it captures latitude and longitude. Right? That's, that's what you are function is doing it. And what we're doing? On the Starbucks data, we are updating these Berkeley locations. So for those five records, you now will have data being filled up with the latitude and longitude. Right? You might want to re-execute and check this. So I'll just try and do this. Well, I'll just run some code here and I'll just check randomly. You can see latitude and longitude is captured now. Right? So this is uh, the benefit. I mean, this is geocode that, that we're using here. It will allow us to identify the location on the map and then capture the latitude and longitude. Next. We want to visualize this Berkeley locations on open street map visualization. So we also have a location 
right? Missing location map, which is uh, given here. I've uploaded that missing location map. Let me delete these two. Yeah, those have to be created. Missing location map is something that we will um, upload. Okay, this is the data. We are, we are basically updating the Berkeley location here. Okay, I, I mean, this is your map, open street map, Berkeley location map. Yeah. You can see that Berkeley. Right, uh, so we are going to upload this. Here, and then we are passing that location. So we are saying mb dot uh, mb underscore map. If you remember, this is the location. This map we are defining the map, and using the background that is your HTML visualization that we have done, we are going to generate a map. Right. So map underscore missing. If I have to go back to the custom function. This is the mb underscore map function, defining function to adjust the dimensions on map. So m is the the name of uh, the, the the right custom code that we are executing there, um, and file name is the image that we are passing here, missing location underscore html. Right. So this is the location or uh, exact address, and we are using the marker to capture the exact location. Latitude and longitude are there for respective to Berkeley, Berkeley and then we are trying to visualize that. Um, the unfortunate thing in Google Colab is it's not able to show us the visualization, but if you can uh, try and fix this issue and, and probably run in your local machine, you'll be able to see the map. It, it will be able to exactly map the four locations that we have, five locations that we have identified for Berkeley. Next, we are trying to gather the data from the um, and some, some readily available uh, data set, right? And this is a geo data frame. Okay? We are basically calling it as a data frame with respect to geospatial data. Right, and in this data set, we will have a unique ID for the location. Then we have the name, total area of that particular location, and the geometry. Right? These are again boundaries with respect to your uh, location. For example, Syria County, the total square meter kilometers is uh, so much. That's the area of that particular location. And these are the boundaries. Geo ID is uh, basically the ID, unique ID given for this location. So we have, we have basically loaded that data. And then we also have three different data sets which talk about population, which talks about the gross salaries, Right, three different data sets. Each data set is, is speaking about uh, okay, one of the fields. As, as you can see, it contains the population of that county. It contains the, uh, the income of each household within that particular county of at least 150K per year salary component. Okay, it contains the number, number of houses in that particular county where the salary is 150K per year from that household. Anything less will not be captured here, basically. That's, that's what it means. Then we have median. This is with respect to the age. Now, when I'm loading this data set, the data set has different fields. Python by default gives the index as uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, right? That's the standard numbering. But here we are trying to choose 
geo id as the index for these columns okay right? these data sets if you see population this is the population in this location we have so many people whereas in this location only 1100 people are so on so forth you can see the number of people residing in a specific county then this is the salaries then these are median income this is the data set that is available now we are trying to combine the ca counties data that is this data along with the population salary and median age data right so we are we are basically first adding the uh, three data sets here and resetting the index to back to 0 1 right this standard index and we are just combining now i'm going to merge this data with respect to the ca and sqr counties but when you are merging we are taking geo id as the reference point for adding both the data points i mean both the data sets so you can see for each right uh, detail uh, code we, we have all these uh, values name square kilometers geographical location population salary number of houses who have salaries uh, greater than 150 dollars uh, 150k dollars then the median age in that particular area this is our uh, data set which is combined now creating a new column this is feature engineering i'm trying to understand what is the density that is what is the area uh, right uh, that is per, given for per person so total population divided by the area this gives me that density and this is the calculation that we are doing here density is given here right so this is your density now we are trying to write a logic in such a way that i am i'm trying to collect the right uh, specific locations counties in such a way that we will have at least uh, 100000 households right we are saying these, these counties are at least 100000 counties uh, households are there making more than 150 dollars per year the median age is 38.5 and the density i am working on density column now will be at least 285 now whatever we are selecting here those counties should also give us this three conditions as the output so and or or and these are and conditions from this three conditions being satisfied we are saying any one of these okay so we are running this and this gives us the data for select counties so you can probably say a count is dot this will give us the uh, data i mean this is the shortlisted data where you can see the conditions the set conditions are satisfied right next we are using something called as epf uh, right uh, epsg uh, value the epsg is is basically a standard which is uh, used these are global standards which basically allow us to um locate right certain um, i mean geographically the details it's it's basically called as a location system right system based on the earth's center of mass epsg 4326 it's it's basically called as geocodic parameter setting or something like that 
right? And this is coming from a petroleum survey group. EPSG is nothing but European Petrol uh, or Petroleum, sorry, survey group, right? And these people, this community publishes the database of different coordinate systems, right, uh, for, for your maps. Okay, so we, we basically use this uh, um, European survey data, survey group data to identify uh, right, these locations. So I'm saying geo data frame, Starbucks, these are the geometric points where X and Y is basically the zip format of your latitude and longitude. So to that, it's um, so a warning message and it, it shows the number there. Right now, I'm, I'm defining this as the standard. The R3 library, the five GOS library, and then we also have to have all these libraries, Pandas, Fiona, Shapely, right? All these libraries, which are already installed. And in one command, we are trying to get all these libraries installed. And once these are installed, I'm using GeoPandas library and then saying joining the data points here, Starbucks underscore GDF, that is a original geometric data that we have loaded from the selected counties. We're ultimately trying to get the store numbers. This is the store number. This is our point of interest. This is where your required data is lying. Now I'm going to use this and try to project the data onto a map using folium library, right? Uh, point of interest, number of stores, point of interest is POI. We are using this information to capture the point of interest, 104. Now we are creating a map which can help us to pinpoint these uh, right, locations which are satisfying the required conditions. Okay, now we are using Folium again back. I'm also saying marker cluster and then passing these two data points. And in a for loop, we are trying to map the data. If not NA and not NA, then you're going to capture the data. And we are saying map underscore stores. Um, you, you're trying to add value here for your marker cluster. This is one of the clustering exercise that we can do. And this one is again embedding a visualization here. Now this is getting generated here. Let me do a refresh. You can see, I get this final map.html. I'm downloading it. And then I'm clicking open. You can see these are the locations, three locations, which are uh, basically satisfying the conditions that we have, right? So there are different other locations also, but yeah, this is basically the high level location that we have, which is giving us the desired results. Okay, like this. You can expand and re uh, right, reduce the visualization to get the precise uh, answer. Okay. And we are also trying to ensure that the data is normalized. Then we are, we are uh, basically trying to come up with a scoring mechanism. Uh, we'll, we'll continue our discussions on what exactly we have done. But for now, this is what we are going. We, we clustered. This is your clustered data. Right. You can scroll down and you can see these are different, different data points that we have. And we are, we are trying to right, cluster group this particular data. So this is with respect to clustering. And uh, in tomorrow's session, we will try and learn something new and interesting with respect to geospatial data. We'll, we'll continue discussion on the same data set also, uh, which will basically allow us to do, um, right, um, also, basically trying to 
come up with the visualizations in a better, better way. But by doing normalization of the data, now what is normalization is something that we will be discussing uh, right tomorrow when we connect again. All right, so we'll try to give some score and we'll also try and capture those locations which have high scores. Right, so we will connect tomorrow. Until then, you might want to stay safe and probably go through the video which is there on YouTube at right? Geospatial and Analytics. You can search for um, Geospatial uh, and Analytics under uh, 360 Digit MG uh, videos library in, in YouTube. You'll be able to find this particular session. All right, we'll wind up here. We'll continue our discussion tomorrow. Thank you so much, everyone. Take care of yourself and uh, see you all tomorrow. Good evening.